welcome back everyone for another video in our series on how to make a platform game in Unity. This is Mike Page with Scripting is Fun. In today's video we're going to be looking at how to add in our other animations for attacking. So, so far we've got an unarmed attack in our project, but we're going to look at how we can swap out animation controllers. So we can have a separate animation controller for our ranged attack animations and for our sword attack animations. So let's jump right on into Unity and get going. So in our project right now, we have this animator controller already set up, the one for player idle, jump, and the unarmed attack animation. What we want to do is have another set of animations for when we have a sword and when we have a gun. So let's work on the one with the sword first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find the animation controller so on our animator here, we see we have this controller called Player. If I click on it, it will show me where it is over here in the project panel. So here's my Player animation controller. So I'm going to select it, and then I'm going to do Control-D to duplicate it. So Control-D to duplicate, I get a new one that's called Player1, which is exactly the same as Player. So let's change the name on this one. This is going to be Player Sword. So this will be our controller that has all of our sword animations. So what I'm going to do now is go back to my player, and I'm going to swap his player controller with the player sword controller. So let's just swap that out. So now he's got player sword. And if we play, it should actually still play just the way it was, because it's the, the exact same animator. So let's just see if he's still animating. And he still walks, he still jumps. If we hit the attack key, he still says that he's unarmed and he can't attack. So everything's still working just fine. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to make some new animations. And then we're going to swap out the animation files that are being played by these different clips here. We're just going to be able to kind of replace what we already have set up here. So let's go into our animation window. And let's make a new animation. So we're going to create a clip. Let's call this Sword Idle. And we'll go ahead and save that. And then let's go to our sprite sheet here. And let's find the sprites for the Sword Idle. And now here we have Idle with the Sword. So we have to go down and find it. It's uh, 32 and 33. So I'm just going to click the first one and shift click the last one. It's two frames. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop those into our animation here. And I believe we had this set at four uh, frames per second. So we can double check that here. I'll just put it like that so it's there. And then let's switch back over to player idle. And player idle was set at four. So that should match up. So now we have player, or we have sword idle, which is um, going to be the new idle animation here for our sword. Let's set up our other animations here as well. So we have sword idle. Let's make another new one. Let's call this sword walk. And then again, let's go in and find our walking animations here for the sword. So that's uh, 48 through 51 here. So I'm just going to click the first one and shift click the last one. There's four frames there. Let's drag and drop that in here as well. I think we had that set to 6 or 8. We'll double check here again. So let's go back to player walk. And we set that to 8, and that was a four frame animation as well. So if we go back to sword walk, we'll set that at 8 as well. That should make it so it's the same speed. Let's make our Next animation, let's make Sword Jump. And we got to go back up and find our Jump Sprite, which is right here, number 35. Just one of them. Let's drag and drop that in. So we now have Sword Jump. And then we got to create one more, which is Sword Attack. And we'll find our sword attack sprites. They start here at sprite number 37 and go through 42. So just shift click that. 
Looks like there's six frames here. Let's go ahead and drop that into our animation. So we'll set that to six frames for now, and we'll see how that looks when we get out there to test it. But now we have our sword animations. We had four unarmed animations. Now we have our four sword animations. So let's go into our animator. And you see all these animations are now sitting out here with our old ones. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click in the player idle. And in player idle, there's a motion frame here. This is the motion is playing. So I'm actually going to swap this for sword idle. So let's go find Sword Idle, and this is drag that in to Player Idle. So now we've got Sword Idle for our idle animation. And then we can, um, actually, we can just get these new animations and drag them off to the side here so they're not getting in the, in the way of what we're trying to do here. Because what I'd like to do is not have to go through and reset up all the transitions again so that's why I'm just swapping the clips. So now we've got uh, the idle has changed and we can actually change the name here of the um, boxes here as well if we need to. So then let's go to walk and let's change the animation here to sword walk. Let's go to player jump, change that animation to sword jump and attack Let's change that animation to Sword Attack. So with all of these in here, we can actually just kind of delete the, the clips out of here that we had before. They're still saved up here in our Animations folder. Uh, and if we hit Play now, we should see him animating with the sword animations. So here he is with his sword in the idle. Let's see if we can find him in the scene view and zoom in on him here a little bit as well. So there he is, and if we start walking, he starts doing his sword walk animation. If we jump, he plays the sword jumping animation. And if we attack, he plays the sword attack animation. So there we go. So we have actually just duplicated a animator controller, and then we have changed the clips that were being played. If I switch him back to his old animator, so let's go back to the player, let's go to the controllers. If we switch him back to player controller, you'll see that he still has all of his unarmed animations here as well. So here he is back with his unarmed animations, and he's all good to go there. Okay, so now we've got him set up with um, both of those animations. So we're also going to go ahead and set up the animations for the ranged combat or the gun uh, attack animations where he's carrying a gun around. So we're going to follow the same steps here. We're going to take either one of our animators here. It doesn't really matter. Maybe I'll just take player sword and this is, um, let's just do a control D to duplicate and then we'll call this player gun. All right, we'll go back to our player. We'll drag player gun into his controller slot. So he's got that one. And then we can set up the animations in our animation tab here. So now we're gonna want another new clip. And this is going to be gun idle. And then we go into the sprites here and we find the ones where he's got a gun. So it looks like uh, sprite 64 and 65 are the ones for gun idle. So we'll select both of those and drag them in and again reset that to 4 frames per second. Then let's go make another new one and we'll call this gun walk. And we'll find the walking animations here for the gun. So this looks like it, starting at 80 and going through 83. Select all those, drag them in. Let's go ahead and set that to 8. And then we need to make our uh, gun attack. So gun attack. And we'll find the sprites for the 
attack here. And those are 69 and 70. So we'll go ahead and drop those in. And then let's put this to 4. And then we need our gun jump. And we'll find our gun jump animation. Here it is, 67. We'll drop that in there. And that will be the gun jump animation. Here he jumps up. And then same thing, back in the animator, we can grab all these new ones and just kind of drag them off to the side here because we're actually not going to wire them in like this. We're just going to change the clip so we can actually just kind of select all those and clear them out. And we'll go to player idle and we'll change this to gun idle. And then we'll go to player walk and change that to gun walk. Player jump, we'll go to gun jump. And player attack, we'll go to gun attack. Okay, let's hit play here and see if he plays all the animations correctly. So here's the gun idle, here's gun walk animation, gun jump, and gun shoot. And that looks okay, I think, for gun shoot. All right. So we've got all the animations built. So we have three different animator controllers that are filled with three different types of animations just so that we can switch um, so that we can switch in between them without having to rebuild everything. So that's kind of a quick way to set these up. Uh, of course, you could build them all from scratch, but why do that if you don't have to? All right, next we're going to go in into our script. And we're going to look at how we can, through our script, have him switch which animator controller that he is using so that when he has a gun, he plays the gun animations. When he has a sword, he has the sword animations, so forth and so on. So let's go into our scripts folder. Let's get the player script open in Visual Studio. Okay, so we're going to need some variables that can hold um, the links to those different animator controllers. So let's just kind of go up here in our variables and let's make a public and what we want is a run time animator controller variable and then we'll call this one unarmed unarmed controller and then we're going to make three of these so public Runtime animator controller, this will be sword controller, and then another public runtime animator controller gun controller. So we've set those up, we'll be able to link our different animation controllers into these variables out in Unity. So now we're going to go in and we're going to look at how we can just set up some keys on our keyboard right now just to switch in between the different states so that we can test them out. So let's go into the update function here and we'll just kind of go down here to the bottom of our update function and let's just listen for a few buttons. So we'll just say if input uh, get key down and then the key that we want to be listening for, uh, let's just do U for unarmed. So if we get the U key, then what we're going to do is we're going to switch to unarmed controller here. Okay, and let's just copy this and paste it in underneath. And then let's do the uh, let's do G for gun so here we'll switch to the gun controller and let's paste it in again and we'll do um, let's see M for melee because we're already using the S key for possibly moving so and this will be for our sword or our melee weapon all right here all right so we've got some keys set up so what we're going to do is we're going to put in the code here now to switch between our animator controllers. 
So what we're going to say is anim, because that's the link to our animator. And then we're going to say runtime animator controller equals. And then this is unarmed, so we'll say unarmed controller. And then we have to say as. And then runtime animator controller. So we basically have to tell it, go to your runtime animator controller, make it equal to this one, and then make sure that you know that this is your actual runtime animator controller that you should start using right now. Okay, so uh, it's going to change the animator controller during runtime if we put this in. If we didn't put this in, it wouldn't actually change it during runtime. All right, and then what we can do is put the same line of code in for all of these. So anim runtime animator controller equals gun controller as runtime animator controller. And then down here for sword, it's anim. Runtime animator controller equals sword controller as runtime animator controller. All right, let's save this script here and let's go back out to Unity. Okay, so out here in Unity, we are going to make sure the player has his default player controller here. But then in his script, we have to link in the different animator controllers. So unarmed is going to be just the one that says player. Sword controller is going to be player sword. And gun controller is going to be player gun. So we've linked in our three controllers into their controller variables. And if we hit play now, we should be able to switch in between the different animations. So we're in unarmed right now. We can do all the unarmed things we're supposed to. If I hit G for gun, we now have switched to the gun animations. And we can do the attack. Okay. And if we go to the melee, or the sword, now we have the sword, and we can jump, and we can attack with the sword, and we are switching in between those three different uh, sets of animations with the controller. All right, so that's how you can set up multiple controllers for use in your game. So in our video today, we've looked at a couple of things. Uh, we looked at kind of a neat little trick where we can make multiple animator controllers for our player out here so that we can give him different animation clips to play. And then we looked at how we can store those in variables and uh, then use some code to switch in between those different animator states uh, or animator controllers as we're playing our game. So in the next video, we'll look at implementing the shooting and the sword attacking components. Right now they're playing the animations, but we aren't actually doing any attacks. And we'll be making use of some animation events again to do that. When we have the gun, we'll shoot a laser blast. When we uh, hit the attack button with a sword, we'll actually trigger an area that can be damaged by that sword. So hopefully you find this an interesting and helpful kind of a hint here on how to switch in between different animator controllers and animation states. Have fun playing with this, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.